Hi, welcome back to the Buckeye Gardener channel. Um, we're, today we're going to start some tomatoes and some cold crops, cabbage, broccoli, stuff like that. And uh, so I'll get a quick update on how my peppers and onions were doing. My peppers, I started on March 10th. Today is March 19th, so it's been nine days. Um, I've got about a 90% germination rate, all but three, four cells maybe. And I think they'll be coming, they just need a little more time. Um, onions, I started back on, I forget the date. It was in February sometime. They're about three weeks old now. Uh, we'll give them a quick trim here in a little bit, and uh, I'll give you a quick update on how they're doing here. All right, here's a little closer look at my peppers. You can see the ones in the middle germinated a couple days earlier. They had a little more heat, I think. Um, I used this extra tray under this 10 by 20 this time. I tried something new to help catch the moisture that collects around the humidity dome. And it seemed like the middle, since it was double trayed, it stayed a little bit warmer on the outside, but it stayed plenty warm. Everything germinated good, it looks like. You see these ones here are still pretty little. Um, it's kind of hard seeing the camera there, but they're coming along, so we'll check up there again in a couple days. That's only been nine days, so we'll see how that goes. I double checked the date on these. He started February 20th, today's March 19th, so it's been almost a month. We'll give them a little bit of a haircut. They're getting kind of tall, straggly. Um, they got a little bit dry on me the other day. I've never started on from seed. This is the first year, so I'm new at all this. So let's give it a quick cut here. Let's see. We're just going to take two or three inches off. I'm not worried about the pieces laying in there. I see some people say, oh, it's going to cause bacteria and everything. We'll see what it does. It's my first year trying them. From seed, I've always planted sets and fed decent luck some years, some years not. So the more I read about the seeds, I thought maybe I'll give this a try. We'll see how this does. Uh, these got a little bit dry on me the other day. I was working a few days in a row and kind of lost track of them. The uh, family cat's been up on them a couple times, trying to figure out how to keep him out of here. It's kind of hard. I had a cage last year I put around my plants, but when you put this uh, light hanging above it, you want to, especially like now, you want it real close. I keep keep these lights about this high on these pepper plants, and the onion's just right above them. And um, you put that cage over it, and then you can't move your light around the way you want. So, so I cut a couple inches off of them. The middle ones are a little bit shorter than the outside. That was due to heat. You see that in the other video. I kind of described where I messed up there. So we're learning a lot from this this year. We'll see what happens. All right. I've been putting a fan on these last couple of days also. Get a little air circulation, make them a little bit stronger. And it definitely seems like it helped on these outside ones. Get some old kitchen shears here. All right. So, we'll go with that. I'll keep you updated on them, see how they're going. I'm hoping to get these in the ground. Oh, about three weeks from now. We'll see what the weather does. It's been really wet here in Ohio um, this year. It's been a really wet spring, really wet winter. It hadn't really been that cold other than the deep freeze we had back around Christmas until here lately. Today was 15 this morning. I think it got a high of 29. So, um, for March, that's pretty chilly. So we'll be starting everything inside here and seeing how it goes. All right, that looks a little bit better. It's supposed to strengthen them. We'll do that uh, one or two more times before we put them in the ground and we'll see how that goes. And I'll keep you posted on that. Let's get the tomato started. All right, so I've got my seed starting mix pre-moistened here. Um, I did another in my uh, pepper seed video. I went into more explanation how much water I put in. So I just went ahead and mixed it up. If you want to see more on that, you can watch another video, but you can squeeze it and squeeze a little bit of water out. I put a little bit more than I did in the peppers. I think I might've got them a little dry, but I like to pre moisten mine since I'm not outside in a greenhouse where I can top water and let the water flow off. I don't want to do that in the basement. It'll make a big mess. So I use this miracle Grow kind right here. Um, seed starting mix. You only want a seed starting mix. So it's sterile. You only use just regular potting soil. I mean, you can, if you have to, I've done it before, but so good seeds are mix. This is like $4.99 a tractor supply. So I've used one bag so far in between my onions, my peppers, and what I've got mixed in this bucket. I want to see how far it goes. I think we're going to need just a little bit more, but I might be able to get four 10 by 20 flats out of it. So we'll see. That's why I only mixed the one. I want to see how far it would go so I can let you know. But so I've got a pre-mixed here. Take the scoop. Start filling the cells. And again, you don't want to press it down into the cell. You just want it to let it kind of fall down in. At the end, I might give it a little shake, kind of knock it down in a little bit, but right now you don't want to press it in. You want to give, you don't want it real tight. You want the roots to be able to grow down into it, have the water flow through it. 
So we'll see how far this one goes. I'm hoping to get four out of this bag. I don't know if I'm going to or not. So I've got several different varieties of tomatoes. I'll go through them here as I'm planting them and tell you what I like about each one. There's some new ones I'm trying this year. Some ones I got for free. So I'm gonna try them, see what they're like. A couple of the seed companies I bought some seeds from. Uh, this year I got most of my seeds from Seed and Such. And I tried Tully tomatoes this year. They sent me a catalog, like some of the stuff they had. And they had some different stuff. So I'll try some of them. So they both sent me some free seeds. So we'll put them in, see what they are. I don't know if I really like them or not, but. I know the one doesn't really seem like any kind of tomato I would like, but it was free, so we'll try it. And then the other one, we're going to start some broccoli, some cabbage. Um, we'll try some collards. I tried some last year, and the bugs kind of got to them, and I couldn't really keep up my garden last year. We had a little one. Took up a lot of my time, and some of it just got kind of out of control. I wasn't that worried about them, but I want to try them again this year. I had some seeds left over, so that, why not? We'll try them, see how they do. I've never had collards. I think I would like them. So we'll see. So we'll do some cabbage, some broccoli. I think we'll do stonehead cabbage. Some green magic broccoli usually does really good for me here. And then try some flash collards. And we'll see, maybe I'll try something else too because I'm gonna have room in that tray I'm not gonna use. So might as well use it for something. All right. Give it a couple of taps. Just kind of knock it down. That was nice and easy. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'll fill the other one up here, we'll get some markers in, and then uh, I'll let you know what I'm planting and how I plant them. Before I get started planting my tomatoes, I just thought I'd show a couple things I use that seems to really make it easier or helpful or whatever. So <clears throat> when I do my watering, I'll bottom water, water once I get started. Um, I got my soil a little dry, so I had to water them a couple times. I don't like bottom watering them when the seeds are trying to sprout and stuff. So I've got this little pump-up sprayer. I got a tractor supply. It's like $4.99. I got it on clearance like December last winter. It was in the middle of the winter. They had it in the clearance section. Uh, but it is great. You just pump that up, put it on mist, mist the top of them. And uh, it was great for just light watering until they get some good roots established where you don't drown them or something. Um, one of the books I use with, there's all kinds of charts in and stuff, is this is the New Seed Starters Handbook. It's a great book. Um, it's got a couple different charts in it showing you when you should start according to dates and how long it takes uh, for seeds to germinate depending on temperatures and stuff like that. But just almost every uh, species of plants in here with a couple tips on it. Uh, I find it really helpful. It's got a lot of stuff in there um, I use. And then I saw this on Facebook somewhere on one of the gardening groups. They were talking about using one of these uh, seed starting or um, sorry it's a photo storage uh, thing and it's got it's made to store like four by six inch photos but what i've seen is you can organize your plants this one here's got tomatoes this one's got peppers this one's got all got melons so i've got it all organized by family and like today i'm going to use a tomato one we'll set that out uh that's one here with some greens i might try something and cold crops so you can have all that organized. I had it all in a box before and it was a nightmare and I forgot half the stuff I bought when I went to plant. So um, Hobby Lobby had these. I had my wife pick one up last year. It was like 14 bucks worth every penny to me. Just the organization was great. So just something to keep in mind, make your, make your life a little easier. And uh, some good information in that book too. There's all kinds of books out there. You can find a lot of them on the internet for free too. But I like having a book I can flip through and see when I want to look something up. So just a couple tips I thought I'd share. All right, so we're gonna start some seeds here. Um, in case you was wondering, I got, so that end of that bag made four 10 by 20 trays full. Um, I need just a little bit more to sprinkle over the top. I think I've got enough in the bucket for that. If not, I might have an extra set out of this uh, cold crop trays. I don't know that I'm gonna plant every cell I've got full in there, but I think I'll have enough. So that'll be four um, 10 by 20 trays out of that one bag of seed starting mix, uh, just for your knowledge. So when you go to buy some, you know what you're getting. How much it'll do i didn't think it would do that much but i couldn't remember what i got out of it last year so these tomatoes my first ones i'm planting here are my absolute favorite these are brandy wine tomatoes they're a pink um we always called them potato leaf growing up uh, i think german johnson's real close to them there are several that are all pretty close but these are my favorite ones they make nice big tomatoes um they're not real assy they're great to eat and i even you know, when I make my tomato sauce and stuff, we even cut them up, put them in there. It doesn't really hurt them. It's not really a pasty tomato or something you would use for sauce normally, but it makes a great tomato. So, 
I'm gonna start three, four packs of these because I like to keep about six for myself. And my dad wants a few of them and I might give up my brother or something, we'll see. See what I'm gonna do with them. I usually plant way more than I need. That's a good thing about starting your seed. You start extras, they don't really cost that much and you have plenty to do whatever you want with them. So the next one we're gonna plant are Celebrity Plus, they're a hybrid. Um, all my tomatoes today are from Totally Tomatoes except for the Red Snappers and the one free one I got from uh, Seeds and Such. So these are all from Totally Tomatoes. These are Celebrity Plus tomatoes, they're a hybrid. Um, they're just like the celebrities, they got a little bit more of um, uh, disease resistance to them and they're more of a semi-indeterminate or semi-determinate instead of a regular determinate. So they might last a little bit longer in the garden, we'll see. Um, I've never grown celebrities, my father-in-law does, and we usually end up using his tomatoes to can because mine sometimes don't do real good because of where I've got them in the garden and stuff. Maybe I'll show it in a later, later video, but the soil in my garden is not the greatest. I'm working on it, it's getting better, but when my house was built years ago, they had leveled that all off. So there's not much topsoil there, and I've been working on it, amending it, I've hauled in three or four trailer loads of good manure, dirt, and stuff. And it seems to be helping, it really does. But it's just gonna take time. I've been working on it for four years or so, and it is getting better. But there's still a layer of rock underneath my garden, and it gets kind of dry. So my tomatoes haven't always did the best in the past. And my father-in-law always likes these celebrities, and they always do good. We end up going picking his tomatoes again, because mine don't always do the greatest. And I'd like to grow my own tomatoes, so I've decided to plant some of these this year. I don't need this many, I'd like to plant about eight. So maybe I'll give this four away, we'll see. Next one's Lemon Boy Plus uh, Hybrid. These are, I planted these last year for the first time after watching a video, uh, Lazy Dog Farm. If you never watched that channel, go check that channel out. Uh, it's one of my favorite gardening channels. Um, he planted these Lemon Boys, not last year, the year before, talked about how good they were, and I was like, ah, it's a yellow tomato. I don't know if I like yellow tomatoes. I thought I'll give it a try. He talked about how good they were, and I'm telling you, this is one of the best tomatoes I've ever had in my life. Um, it produced really early, earlier than most of my other tomatoes, even the early doll I think I had last year. And it was just, it was so mild, it wasn't acidy. It was kind of like the brandy wines aren't acidy, these aren't acidy. They got really big at first, and they were just a really, really good tomato. They made the best tomato sandwiches. Um, I got a picture of the tomato sandwich. I made it last year somewhere. If I can find it, I'll put it on there, but they are really good tomatoes. It says 75 days, but them ones last year, I had some last year, like 60 days, and they had a huge tomato, and they were delicious. So I decided I was gonna plant those again for sure. <clears throat> Next up, a red snapper. These come from Haas. Uh, I always like Haas tools, um, their tools and their seeds. I bought some of these last year and planted them. I wasn't overly impressed with them last year, but my tomatoes didn't do the greatest last year either. So I had like five seeds left and I thought, you know what? We're gonna try it and see what happens. And we'll try it again here. I'll we'll push these down just a touch, just because these are pelleted seeds and you want them to get good moisture contact. I got one seed left, I'm gonna double plant one of these just because it's the last seed and I clear the pack away. So put that down in, okay. Um, these are a determinate tomato. Um, they were okay. I was a little disappointed in them, but I want to try them again because, like I said, my tomatoes didn't do the greatest last year. So um, the year before, I did really good watering them, and they did really good. My garden is kind of dry, so let's see. These are early girl hybrids. I wanted some early tomato, the earliest I could get. Last year, I planted early doll. I got the seeds for free from seeds and such. They were okay. They were really small tomato. They only got about that big. And they just, they were okay. They weren't nothing crazy. I know these early girls, I've had these before and they're really good. So I'm gonna start four of them and uh, I'll up plot all, or up plant all these tomatoes here in a month or so, uh, weather depending on how they're doing and stuff. Last year, I think it was about, a, just about four weeks, about a month. And I up planted them and uh, into like four inch pots. I'll probably put these in the bigger pots and get them started. Maybe go ahead and even stake them in the pot get them a good start. That way try to get the earliest tomatoes possible here in 6A. You know, we don't plant in our garden until the middle of May. And then by the time we get tomatoes, sometimes it's usually after 4th of July before you get your first one. It's just late in the year. I like to enjoy them. So I'm gonna try to get some early as I can. And then some of these like brandy wines or indeterminates and then lemon boy, and they'll last throughout the season. So I usually get them at the beginning of September on some of those. So we'll see how that is. So the next one here is Sun Sugar Hybrid. I've never planted these. These are a little, cherry type tomato. Uh, these are yellow or orange. <clears throat> it's supposed to be really sweet. It's only 62 days. So um, 
I really want to try these. I've heard good things about them. Uh, last year I planned as Valentine, I think it was called. I was kind of disappointed in them. They, uh, they were okay later in the year, but early on they were kind of tough and they didn't have a whole lot of flavor like the first month or so. And I was really disappointed. Then they kind of came around. I think after we had kind of a cool wet summer to start with. And after it warmed up, they seemed like they did pretty good. So we'll uh, we'll try this, see what it does. I plan two different kinds of these. I got a four-year-old and a one-year-old now. My four-year-old loves these tomatoes. Usually I'll plant a couple in the garden and plant one up close next to the house. That way when he's outside playing, he can run over and get a tomato and he'll eat on them all summer. So I'm really excited to try these. These are really good, really sweet. I planted another cherry tomato. These are super sweet 100s. Um, they're kind of the same deal. These are 65 days, these are 62. These are red, they get a little bit smaller. Um, they're supposed to be really sweet, so I don't know. I'm kind of excited to try them too. Like I said, he loves his little tomatoes, so whatever I can do to keep him interested in the garden and everything and eating fresh vegetables is good, so we're going to keep keep these going. Let's see if he'll eat some of these. Like I said, I try to plant a couple of them up close to the house, so he's got something to snack on when he's outside playing. My garden's about 100 yards away from the house. We don't always make it out there all the time, so these are really tiny seeds here. Uh, I might double plant these. I got plenty of seeds, I think. Make sure they come up good. Push it pellet ones down in there again. Get them good and moist. Might even hit them with a shot of water after I plant them just to make sure they get extra water. That pelleting is like a clay, I believe. Oh, yeah, I got plenty. So for next year. So those are the super sweet 100s. Um, yeah, the pelleted seeds, it's like a clay on the outside. I think it makes it easier to plant, like with machinery and stuff, I think. I've read somewhere. So they put it on to make the seed a little bit bigger. Excuse me, but you got to get the clay to get wet and the moisture you get through the seed for it to sprout and the clay breaks down. So I might put a little extra water on those ones when I get a plant. All right. These last two, these were freebies. This first one was from Totally Tomatoes. It's called a Zapotec Oxican. I don't know what it is. It says it's dating back to the Indians of Mexico. These large ruffled pink fruits have yellow bush, weigh up to one pound, and are somewhat hollow and have mild sweet flavor. Ideal for stuffing, baking, grilling. They're an indeterminate. I don't know. I'll go plant two of them. We'll see what they do. They're free. I always like trying new stuff, so we'll see how they are. Seeds are pretty small. Let's see here. So I'm going to plant two of these. I might double the seed up. Didn't cost me anything anyway, so we'll see what it does. As far as the cost goes on seed starting, it's not really any cheaper unless you save everything every year and keep it going. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of variables to it. Um, so last year I bought a small kit on Amazon and I bought it in February. And by the way, if you're going to do seed starting, buy everything off season, buy it in November, February is so much cheaper, especially places like Amazon stuff. Hey, I bought a little set. I could only get five trays. It was, it wasn't a 20, it was like a 16, like 10 by 16 or whatever, or 18. But anyhow, uh, it was, it worked okay. I didn't, I only had two, I only had enough set up two in the basement and I kind of run out of room. I only had, I bought two grow lights, but I had them parallel with each other every one pog was afraid one wasn't bright enough so this year i ordered all these trays and everything from um, greenhouse megastore and that's part of my christmas gift i picked out for myself and i ordered for my birthday i got me a couple lights and stuff to put up too so now i've got four of these led they're just cheap ones on amazon there's nothing fancy to them i don't know that i really need four i think uh one might be enough but you know what why take the chance it's not that much more money, and they only burn 60 watts a piece anyway. So even when everything's going full bore down here, which it hasn't yet this year, but now that I've got all these four trays set up, I will, it's going to pull 240 watts. So that's like two 100 light bulbs running in your house for 14 hours a day. I run my timers 14 hours a day. I did it last year. It seemed to be a good number. Everything did good, so I'm going to keep it the same. Oh, I didn't talk about these. These were chocolate pear. Um, I don't even remember what they were about. It doesn't really have a description on them. They were free from seeds and such. I remember they kind of looked like a pear and they were kind of purplish looking. Uh, I planted Cherokee Carbon last year. Wasn't overly impressed with them, so I don't have real high hopes for these, but they're free. Hey, I'll try them. We'll see what they do. So, all right, that sums her up for the tomatoes. Let me flip over to the cold crops and uh, we'll get them started and get them in some dirt. 
All right, so let's go ahead and get our cold crops and some other things started in this tray. Uh, I'm starting these same time as the tomatoes. I'm hoping to get these in the ground about four weeks from now. So that's going to put me about the middle of April. Um, I've never planted anything that early. Everybody says, oh, I mean, maybe that's why my cabbage and stuff doesn't do so well. But a lot of times I can't get the garden worked up till then. And nobody's got really got plants yet. But now I'm starting my own. I'm going to try it this year. I'm going to get my cabbage and broccoli in early, my collards. I'm going to get some lettuce in the ground early. I did get lettuce in early last year. I got a small bed up by the house I put it in. But I put garlic in that bed this fall. So now I'm not real sure what I'm going to do with my lettuce. I kind of hate to put it in the garden. I'm afraid it'll just die in there. Because it's hard to keep it worked around. There's a lot of clay in that garden. It's hard on lettuce. But I might plant a little bit out there. Maybe I'll plant some close to the house somewhere. That is the wrong... Let's just switch the tag on that. I believe I did this in my last video too. So, green magic broccoli. That's what I'm planting. That's what I've tried a couple different kinds. This has always been the best for me. Way better than some of the other. I tried Imperial one year and there was something else. Just didn't do very good. This green magic always does good. This is last year's seed. Um, probably should have doubled it up. But you know what? I don't need 12 plants of broccoli anyway. I just planted it because I had room in my tray. So, we'll see what it does. Now I got some Stonehead Cabbage. This cabbage is also the best that I found good for me. I've tried Dutch Lay Flat. Oh, I can't remember what some of the other ones were, but this always does the best for me. My problem is I never get it in the ground in the spring when I need to, so it never gets a good start. And usually by the time it's last, you know, the last month of growing, it gets too hot for it and it suffers, so. I made some homemade sauerkraut one year. It was really good. Last year, my cabbage didn't do good enough. I didn't get to make any. So we'll see what this does. That's the stonehead cabbage. All right. So here's my collards. These are flash collards. Uh, like I said, I've never even had collards. I just wanted to try them. Figured, why not? You can't really, nobody around here really grows them, so you can't find them in the greenhouses anywhere. Actually, I think I did find them. There's some local Amish greenhouses around me that I usually get my plants from, and they are really good. Um, their prices are really good. I think, I can't remember what they were last year. A couple years ago, they were $13 a flat um, for tomatoes, peppers, all the vegetables. The flowers were a little bit more, but I mean, that was a really, really good price for compared to most greenhouses. Um, so yeah, I really can't start them cheaper than I can buy them. But at the same time, I can plant every variety that I want to. You go there, you know what size plants you're getting. Sometimes your tomato plants are real small when, you know, you can plant tall ones. Same way with some of these. Sometimes it's hard to find broccoli and cabbage when I go to plant the rest of my garden. So this year I got a little more control. Of it. We'll see what happens. So I am going to plant a little bit of lettuce. And I know everybody says you shouldn't start lettuce. You just plant it in the garden, you know, plant it straight in the ground. But I've got room in this tray and I'm going to put this in the ground at the same time I'm going to start some in the ground. So I thought, why not try it? I'm, I've seen people do it online. I think Lazy Dog Farm does it on some of his videos. And I thought, you know what, let's try it. So. I've got this green ice lettuce. I got this last year from Seeds and Such, and I've tried Black Seed and Simpson and some other stuff. And this is by far, I like uh, loose leaf lettuce. You just cut off and get a couple harvest out of it. I don't really care for the head style lettuce. And this is uh, by far the best loose leaf lettuce I think I've had. But we always ate the Black Seed and Simpson, and it was good. And this last year was just phenomenal. We ate a lot of it. We had a mild early start to summer and uh, late spring too. So it got a really good start. I'm trying to just get one in each one. Oh, that's a wrong hole. Let's see here, green ice. Like I said, I've never tried this from seed. I just, I had these room in this tray. I didn't really need room for any more cabbage or broccoli. I would like to plant more broccoli, but then you run into the problem where if you get too much, you got where are you gonna store it? In your freezer, you only got so much room, so. So that was green ice lettuce. Um, it kind of reminds you, it's almost like a iceberg type, but it's loose leaf lettuce. It was really good. This is prize head lettuce. Um, I got this for free. That was this year or last year. I'm not sure. I can't remember. It doesn't say on the date. Let me see what it says inside here. Uh, it does not say. Regardless, I got it for free. I've never even tried it. But, again, I've got some room right here in this tray, so... Why not? I'm assuming it's a heads type of lettuce, but. We'll see. 
So after I cover these plants up here, I am going to, I'm going to put humidity dome on this one, but I'm not putting it on a heat mat. Um, it stays 67-ish or so in this basement. Um, if I put it on this side of the table, there's a furnace vent above it. It'll probably get a little bit warmer even. And I, they should germinate. I've got a chart. The lettuce germinates pretty quick. All these germinate within just a few days. So uh, like three or four days, they put on a heat mat. I think I started on a heat mat last year, but I'm not going to this year. I don't think I need it. So we'll see what happens. So on the end here, I've got some rhubarb. Um, I love rhubarb. I've got three big plants in my garden that I've been taking care of for a few years. And last year I started some from seed, some Victoria rhubarb. My other kind is either McDonald or Crimson. I'm not real sure. I had two different kinds I'd got from the Amish greenhouse years ago. One of them died and I don't know which one it is. And they both, you look it up online, they both look pretty much the same. They're real similar to Victoria. Um, they're really good rhubarb. But anyhow, I just wanted to try something else last year. I had some Victoria seeds I bought and I, like a year before that I bought them, never planted them. I didn't think it'd do any good. so. I started them in January just to try out my seed starting stuff in the house, and they did really good. Um, I don't even know how many plants I had. I gave a lot of them away. I planted five. Four I'm ended up making it through the summer, and this fall I thought something dug them up, and uh, I just found out this spring I went out there. We started getting some warm spells. I started digging out of the dirt, and there was little red buds down in there, so apparently the root's still in there, and it's growing. So I wanted some more rhubarb, and I'm not going to be able to split those ones for a few years, because usually you plant a root, and... That's what you use to start your crop. Um, I started seed last year. It did really good. Still growing, so I almost try some more seed. I wanted to try some. I want some good red rhubarb. I found this ruby red. I think I got it on eBay. Um, I've never heard of it. I've, I, I've heard of it, but I've never seen it around here anywhere. So we're going to try this, see what it does. Um, you can buy some good roots and stuff. Some of them are 20 or $30 for a bare root to plant in. I got 25 seeds for $4 on eBay. So if it grows one plant, it paid for itself. Last year, I grew all kinds of plants. So that was the Victoria. This is Ruby Reds. We're going to try it and see what it does. I'm going to put two per hole because I'm not sure if it's even going to grow. I assume it will. Did good last year. Like I said, the Victoria seeds were about six times the size of these ones. We'll see what happens. Some of these feel like they're just a shell. So I'm going to maybe plant a little bit more in some of them there. That one felt like it was just the outside shell of sunflower seed. It's kind of what they look like, little tiny ones. All right. So, you have rhubarb, lettuce, something you don't normally start from seed on either plant or start. But we're going to try it see what it does. Like I said, I had good luck with that last year. And I've got room to try the lettuce. So, we'll see what that does. Let's cover these up with dirt and get the domes on them and get them cooking on the heat mat and see what happens. All right, so that's how much soil I've got left. That should be enough to cover all these plants up. I don't want to cover them very hard, just enough to keep moisture in so they push through good and easy. So that was one bag of miracle Grow seed starting mix. I think it was a eight ounce bag, maybe. I can't remember. It's whatever tractor supply I had. It's the closest thing to me. I know everybody talks about Pro Mix, all this stuff. I can't get Pro Mix where I live, close by anywhere. And I'm not paying that kind of money to have it shipped to my house. That's ridiculous. It looks like I'm gonna be just a little bit short. Get some of this good wet on these tomatoes. That's what I'm really worried about. A little bit over here. All right, I'm gonna be just a little bit short. I'm giving just a little tiny, I'm not even hardly pushing on them, just enough to smooth it out. Maybe keep a little bit of moisture down in around the seed. All right, I'm going to mix up just a touch more dirt so I got to have to cover these up real quick and then we'll cover them up. All right, so I went ahead and mixed up a little more dirt, put it over top of cold crops. Um, I didn't video that, it was the same thing as the other one. Just barely push them down lightly, added just a touch extra water to the red snappers, the pelleted seeds to give them a little extra moisture to get them going. So we'll see how that goes. Everything looks like it's ready to go. So we're gonna put a heat mat under the tomatoes 
And these are just cheap heat mats off Amazon. Nothing fancy. They come in a kit I got last year. Plug this in here. And then we'll put our humidity domes on. Put one on the tomatoes. That'll keep the humidity inside there. It should stay around 86-ish. So, according to my chart that I've got here, tomatoes at 86 degrees should take about six days to germinate. Now, I'm not going to paint a heat mat under these. They will be under the lights, so they might heat up just a little bit more than the temperature in here, because I'll go ahead and hang the lights, just have them ready to go, just in case. So my broccoli, let's see. Broccoli, at, let's call it 68. That's about what it stays down here. It's showing six days, so they should germinate just about the same time. Cabbage, uh, 68 showing six days, so they should germinate just about the same time. I have no reason I'm putting the dome on it is to keep the moisture in it. Um, it shouldn't have any effect on the actual, um, like keeping the moisture in the other one that makes a little bit of almost steam, I guess you could say. All that condensation on there that keep, traps that in, keeps it good and wet. Um, we're not using heat under this one, but I wanna keep that moisture in there. So I'm gonna leave these vents closed because it shouldn't overheat. There's vents on this one, I will open them. Let some of that heat out. My peppers, they were around 85 or so on the inside. Uh, the outside ones, I never really checked them with a the thermometer. I thought they would be pretty uniform. I don't think they were because they took about three days longer to germinate. So I'm guessing that they were closer to the 68. Uh, they were under the heat map, but they had a double pan under them. And I think that had a big effect on it. Um, this one I did a little differently. I didn't use the double pan. Uh, basically because I only have two of these big pans. I'm using this one I have to use in the onions because they're open holes on the bottom. And I left one on the pepper just because they, they, it's been in there, so I'm just going to leave it there. I'm going to try it. Last year, I used this old piece of countertop I've got here. This thing will let the moisture come out of it, and it'll run down, and I don't want to get all of that wood. The table kind of swells the wood up. It's not a good table, but I don't want to ruin it. So put that under there. This is plugged in. I'll lower my lights down, and I'll keep you posted. And uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.